Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Maniac1. And uh, today, what we're going to be doing is uh, welcome to a tutorial. Today's video is going to be showing you how to paint simple 187th or any other small scale vehicle for that matter. This one I got off of Thingiverse, I think. It's, yeah, it's Tiger Ace's KV Expansion Pack Redone. If you want a good 3D printed, because this is 3D printed. Uh, KV series tank. Generally, I think it's just KV 1, 2, and 1S. But it comes out pretty nicely. This way I had it printed on the fine setting. Uh, th those bits right there didn't print right, so there's nothing there. Uh, it, he does a very nice job. He always adds a turret ring. A lot of other models I actually have to add the turret ring myself to, which is annoying and took me a lot of time to learn. But this came in four pieces, the turret, I'm, I'm a little disoriented because left is right on the camera and right is left, because you know the camera's facing me. And then the body I actually super glued the tracks to, uh, actually no, model glue, testers. I actually prefer Tamiya uh, for paint, but as I have a decent Russian green, it is just literally just... Uh, uh, come on, flat green. It does not have autofocus on it. But it's just uh, flat green. Other colors I use are gunmetal, flat. Let's see? 2 bucks 14 where I got it. Welcome to America, folks. And this is gloss red. I prefer flat red, but my flat red is actually sealed shut at the moment. I can't get it open. So if you have any ideas on how to get it open, let me know so I don't break it. Uh, other than the paints and the KV2, three brushes, big brush for coating things, you know, just like that. Medium brush, I mean, not medium, it's, it's much smaller than the big brush. For smaller things like detailing, like here kind of thing. Uh, bits like this. Uh, I'm not going to paint this this time. It'll just be green at the end of the tutorial. I also put some stuff here on the end of the gun. And uh, this, this small brush for details, which will be the Russian insignia, the star, painted on the side of the turret. And I have a second camera up I, I, on this uh, sour cream container. It was the right height. Don't question me. Along with, uh, let me turn the light off. Just a standard pair of modeler's glasses, or whatever you want to call these. I don't know what they exactly are. With the thickest magnification setting. So I'm actually going to pretty much have my chin on the one thing. So if my mic gets quiet, it's because I actually passed where the useful range is and it will have just gotten a little quieter because I pushed it pushed it I pushed it away from my face a little hopefully lighting and everything is good uh, other than that newspaper essential for painting I actually have some placemats underneath the newspaper to kind of uh, make it so that it doesn't get all nasty to paint spills which I really hope it doesn't but you never know with paint and OBS as my standard thing I would have preferred to have done this at my modeling table, which is not this. This is my my gaming desk, but I couldn't get my laptop to talk with the cameras. So yes, let's let's crack on. So first up, uh, wait, uh, shake the paint. Transition. Oh, ooh, I set my transition to a bad key. We'll just do down, or no, left, I mean right, down plus right, that's not a thing, okay, so uh, right, apply, okay, so next see. okay, so you guys will be able to see part of my desktop, which is fine. Boom. 
You wanna you wanna transition? No. Okay. I'm gonna just click transition. Okay. So here we go. I always shake the paint up, and then the way I paint, I actually paint out of the lid. I put this paint over here, right by the webcam, and hope and hope to anything that I don't spill it. And then I'll start with the turret. Xander, put headphones on or mute it. Then do something else. I'm recording in here. Idiots in Overwatch, guys. Idiots in Overwatch. I need my light on. I'm not calling Xander an idiot, for all any of you wondering. So, one thing that I love, I'm using just standard PLA filament. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, ABS and PLA, I think. And it actually accepts paint really nicely. At least to my experience. ABS filament uh, is closer to tanks, like the, the, the game sold by GF9, which does not receive paint worth beans. Oh, sorry guys. Didn't realize that the camera was too high. Uh, let me think of a quick solution. You know, these Logitech cameras can only go down so far. Okay, there we go. Back into it. Now, if you're wondering why I'm dipping out of my paint jar now, it's because I've actually run out of paint in the cap. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I'm used to painting with larger volumes of paint, larger lids, whatever you want to say. And I know this isn't quite a Russian green. It's very close. And paints do differ, you know, the way they look differs drastically depending on what kind of light you're in. I'm just in a normal lamp, so it's probably not the best light to be painting in. But it is 805 actually. And it is not a great time for me to be painting in sunlight because it's dark. Ish. I also have a slightly blue LED if you can't tell. Like, when I do this. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, you can tell. Uh, unless you're colorblind. To that certain color. And light blind. Which, mm, I don't know why you're watching my videos if you're light blind. I mean, I, I, do, I love the view. Thank you. I just don't understand you. But I got nothing against you. Man, woman, whatever you are. Whoever you are. But yeah, so it's it's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, this is probably gonna be a long video. Gotta let that dry so that it will, so that I can handle it to paint the top. So now we'll head on. We'll get to the the hall. All right. And I will be going over the hall again, not with the same color, but with other colors probably to touch things up like machine guns on the front, rivets. I've actually done a whole collection of these. I have a bunch. I've downloaded most of them off of Tiger Ace's uh, thingiverse. And then I, after I pretty much ran out of what I wanted, after I did run out of what I wanted to print from him, I moved on to getting just the, well, just like the files, and oftentimes they don't have anything, they don't have the holes for the turret to go in, so I have to CAD them up and make them, make them real nice. My most recent one that I printed was a Bat Chat 25T. I gotta reprint the hull because the hull, uh, the 
tracks I it printed fine but I messed around with it to see if I could make it look better and broke it essentially I mean, nothing is true yeah it's broken as much as I'd love to lie to myself and say nothing's truly broken I can fix it with 86 days of patient work but not now be easier faster and pretty cheap to reprint it because once you have a printer or you have a friend with a printer uh, you can print small these are 187 approximately don't quote me on that they're, they're supposedly 187 tanks however uh, sometimes you can't scale them right like this one I can't promise that it's 187th because I had to scale it based on length so I gave it like the whole the, the length of an entire kv2 just on the hull because the I, I couldn't get a dimension on the kv2 without a turret so just the hull and since this things was printed without Generally what I do to size them is I take the width of the original tank. Now here's a fun fact on how to size into HO, theoretically. You take the size of the original thing, doesn't matter if it's in meters or feet, convert it to feet, so it, I guess it does matter if it's in meters or feet, and then multiply that by 3.5 and that is how many millimeters your object is going to be. So if it is 3.5 millimeters wide or whatever I don't uh, if it's 10 mil or if it's 10 feet wide which I don't think this is I think this is not perfectly 10 feet wide then it's gonna be about 35 millimeters wide uh, in HO scale I don't know about other scales I only know about HO because that's what I what I get them printed in and what I work in mainly I also will do work in 135th and occasional work in 148th. But those aren't 3D printed, those are actually models. I, I buy the models and build them. Even rarer than, than any of them is uh, the very occasional work in 172nd, which is only when I find a model in 172nd that's detailed enough and that I like well enough. To buy because buying models is way more expensive than 3d printing them however 3d printing them as you can see is way less detailed there's way less you can print on a 3d model and many fewer moving pieces unless you want to set your printer to print for ah crud and this my friends my friends my friends is what happens when you try to glue PLA filament with model glue. Apparently, model glue does not glue PLA filament well. Lesson learned. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna go super glue this real quick. Wonderful. Gotta love it when glue doesn't hold. Right, everybody? I'll be right back. Alright, guys, and we are back. Sorry about that. I mean, since it's not a live stream, it's not too bad, but... So this is going to be how you fix it. Because, you know, I just broke it, and well, you want to make sure it's fixed. Actually, I spent so much time getting my super glue that it's nearly dried. Now, I always apply an ungodly amount of glue just to give it a better chance of holding. did it from the front see if it'll hold if not well I have to call the tutorial here for today and finish it tomorrow I mean it'll still be one video for you guys it'll just take me two days to record it so I'm gonna be very careful now while it's drying. So 
this is this is not something that happens every time. I mean, every time I come out with a product that I'm pretty stinking happy with, but it, I don't always break it. <laughs> Actually, last time I got paint in my eye, so yeah. But it wasn't this stuff. It was not testers enamel, so none of you have heart attacks. It was just normal uh, Tamiya acrylic, which is much, much better if you're going to do a dumb thing like that and get paint in your eye. Now, I always go for, you know, thorough paint job. I'm sorry, I'll try to get it closer. Actually, it'd probably be better. Hold on a second. Yeah, hang on, guys. I'm gonna just boop. There we go. So we get a nice, a different view of what I'm doing. I mean, you guys aren't actually gonna be getting the the forward view. You're gonna be getting the back view. But you can tell that I'm running the paintbrush along the inside of the track, like this in an attempt to get it to whatchamacallit. Now this is really the simple part of this entire process because once I finish this I get onto this parts where I begin to need my glasses. Now I, I don't wear glasses glasses but you know my special modeling glasses with zoom. that I can zoom in on it. Alright, so there's the hull. That's done for the second. So I can finish the top of the turret. Now this is just a quick, easy process. And after you've done a few, a simple tank like this generally takes me, I think, 45 minutes to an hour. Might take me a little longer since I'm commentating on it, but here is what we have so far. I think my last, I think the first cut of the video was about 15 minutes long, maybe. I don't know. I can actually check that. See, this is the what we have currently. Looks much better than what we had originally. The blank gray KV2. It's a little stiffer now because there's paint in it, which actually is a side effect that I generally want because I like more realistic turrets. I use these to play the board game, or not really a, what would you call it? It's not really a board game, but the game tanks. I use these to play that. So I have a bunch, and I also actually like modify the cards. I don't change the stats. I change the tank that the card goes with. So I actually, instead of having a Super Pershing, I haven't gotten a Super Pershing yet. I actually use an M103, and yes, that's my knee. I sit weird. Uh, I use an M103 as a Super Pershing. Deal with it, people. Deal with it. All right, so we are going to switch back to other webcam for the next bit all right give me just a second folks Now, on to more details. So, first thing first, we'll let this drive for a second. So the first details I often do are, come on, there we go. The 
teeny tiny little machine guns. On the sides of the turret when they're there and another thing I'll always do all of my tanks have well-worn guns so they have this I always put a little bit of I don't entirely know what causes this but I always put that at the end of the barrel so it looks like the gun has been fired a lot So that's it for the turret for now. Later on, the only thing that's left on the turret now is inscriptions, which I will probably do after the video because it requires me to get really close, and I can't get close because of the camera right here. It's actually right in front of my face. Let's see, I can... do this show off some of the detail now next up I'd say this is decently I mean it's not dry by any stretch of the imagination if you look let me see if I can uh settings let's see how do I do this Here, well, look at that I can bring this onto my other screen hmm nope I can't so I cannot change the focus of this camera, which is annoyingly so focused over here. So yes, okay, so next up is the tracks for which I will be cleaning this brush. I kind of do a lousy job cleaning it during the painting process. I usually paint it out or clean it afterwards. I will just wipe off as much excess as I can all the excess paint oh that is bright gets just wiped right off there we go you got multiple bright lights on this and now that it has cleaned off enough actually always keep this paint far away from me because I am notoriously good at spilling it in some dumb way or another so dip your brush I need to buy more gunmetal paint I'm running low in there and then very carefully ish you don't have to be super careful I mean I tend to be careful but at the same time this is one of the faster parts that I paint because it's not an incredibly complex see you can already see the difference it's already starting to look like more of a tank and it'll just look more and more like a tank especially a Russian tank as time goes on when we will mount a strong Russian gun on the front and call it glorious KV-2 we should powder, we use uh, no gunpowder in Russia you no use gunpowder you use powdered vodka you better not light match inside turret or you get blown up like entire ammo rack of boat battleship 
get blown up in your underwear. That's how powerful Russian engineering is. Also how ridiculous. No offense, Russia. But the uh, tank where the crew was standing in the engine oil. You trying to get barbecued Carl? Or not Carl, that's more German. You trying to get barbecued Boris? There we go. We've got our basic tracks. Now, I'm going to see how much paint's left. Okay, none. Pretty much none is left on that. That's good. Clean off this brush. And then get on to the painting of the inside of the tracks, which is a little more finesse requiring. Actually, I'm going to paint the machine gun on the front and the engine grates real quick and put a little bit of darkening on the rivets Sorry if I don't talk much, it's because there's a lot of concentration that goes into this. A little bit of paint right there. And then scrape off as much as possible from around it. I don't know what that is, but we'll paint the straps gray. Now this is probably one of the easiest tanks that I've come across so far. It is very simple to paint. Given most of the Russian tanks that I've done so far have been rather simple to paint partially because A, they're Russian. They're just green. And B, they're Russian so they were mass produced and didn't have a whole lot of camouflage. Because the best way to booger up a tank and make it really hard to paint is to add excessive camouflage. Take it from a guy who has plenty of experience. I have almost every single tank that I've painted that's not Russian camouflage. Actually, I think I do. Yes, every single non-Russian tank that I've painted so far is at least partially camouflaged. And that means I have a camouflaged Tiger II, VK3001P, Vitmin's uh, 007 Tiger. So the borrowed Tiger that he died in. Thanks, man. You, you Not only did you borrow my tank, you blew it up. Uh, a Hummel. A Pershing. Oh, you know what? I have one that's not camouflaged. An M103 that is not camouflaged. Uh, but everything else is. Uh, I also have a Hellcat. A Sherman Firefly. And a partially painted Super Hellcat. Sorry if you guys are having trouble seeing me this at the moment. I've got to get it really close to me. A for precision. And B for whatchamacallit. So my magnifying lenses can actually magnify on it. Because they are such strong magnification that I have to be point blank range for a rubber band gun. Made out of that is made by Nerf in their earlier series. So, you know, point blank being 
personal space of a nation with no personal space. Not the personal space of Russia. So yeah, so far, this is what the KV-2 looks like. Pretty good, no? I think it's pretty good KV-2. But don't worry, it gets better. Once I uh, finish painting the tracks, which is one of the longest bits, because it is a rather tedious paint job. Because you're not just coding anything and everything, you're coding a very specific thing with paint that is almost empty. I mean, it just looks like a bottomless pit, but I gotta go... I don't know. I have that paint left over from when I was on vacation. Found an excellent little train shop. Got a whole bunch of models there. Like one guy who out does me in, their, in business. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm sure there's a bunch of people. Since you know I only shop there when I'm on vacation. a very thin thing. Also, I tend to not paint that tiny little crack between the hull and the tracks. I tend to attempt to paint it one of the two colors. So I will either get it gray or whatever you want to call this, gunmetal on the inside. Or uh, I'll get it the one of the basic colors of the tank on the inside personally I prefer tanks that don't have those because then I don't have to decide but if I do have to decide I will generally go for the base color simply because it's the first color I put on and if I do get a little bit of track color on it, it doesn't really matter. Man, that's a lot of paint. I don't need nearly that much. And yes, I know, it's not perfect. But at this scale, who can be perfect? I mean, my index finger is as long as the entire tank nearly but yeah there we go there is essentially a finished KV2 the only thing left come on webcam you can do it. Come on. Whoa, look at that wobble there. Wobbly, wobbly, wibbly, wobbly. Okay, is a star on the side. Right about there. And on, one, and on one side, I'll probably on this side, I'll put it up top so that I can write something on it. Uh, currently, I've used the inscriptions. I, I've used uh, the funniest inscription I've used is Russian bias on an IS3. And realistically, it's actually not that powerful a tank. <laughs> but yeah, next tutorial will probably be is going to be um, painting slightly more difficult tanks. There'll be medium difficulty so tanks with some stowage on them. I actually already have a tank lined up I have a t29 American heavy tank to be printed 
or no, actually, it's already printed. I've just got to do it, paint it up, and record it. And I've still got to get the third episode, painting tanks with a butt ton and a half of storage on them, stowage. That's going to be an interesting episode because that's going to be much longer. One of those will take me a full on hour. And that's if I move fast. And actually, I don't even have the tracks for that tank painted yet. Uh, that, that's the Sherman Firefly. It has so much stowage on the sides. And front and everything. It's got sandbags all up the Wazos. Wazoo, as I say it. Wazos, as Xander pronounces it, which is kind of stuck. So now I say it. Up the Wazo. There we go. First try. I can't do a Batman voice. So, uh, stars. They seem so complicated, yet, realistically, they're so easy. So, I'm going to draw a line. And then from there, you make a bit of an X. See? Nice little star on the side. And then over here, I'm going to put it up high. Need some more paint. This one is going to be way up here. This one is going to say Hand of Stalin. On the side. In Russian lettering. They're nearly in the same spot. One's just a little higher so that I can write Hand of Stalin. And then this one is low enough that I couldn't be able to write anything. So there you go, guys. That is how to paint. Relatively simple. Let me switch to the other camera. Relatively simple uh, small-scale tanks. It's a little more complicated once you get to the larger scale due to the fact that then people tend to... I've only done it a couple times. Once, actually. I mean, I've only done, like, four tanks. But people tend to expect weathering and much higher levels of detail. When you're at this scale, people are, they're decently happy with just this. Wait, I said I was gonna switch to the other camera. I'm gonna switch to the other camera. Webcam with the thing. Boom, here we go. This is essentially the finished product. Yes, there's a little bit of overlap there where I didn't paint it well. That star's probably going to receive some touch-ups. But yeah, see, there's the back. There's the, the engine deck where I added a little bit of oomph to the, the rivets and stuff. But yeah, even the underside. Remember, don't be con. Paint the underside of your vehicles. There's the turret. Front. Or right front you can see there's a little bit of gun usage on it left it's gonna say hand of stalin approximately because i don't speak russian so you know i say it's google translatees russian hand of stalin but yeah the kv2 from roll the tanks there you go and now you too can paint your own and it'll probably take you more time than it took me not because you're bad at painting, 
You just haven't had the practice. So, why don't you go get yourself a 3D printed tank or something? I don't know. I would, I, you don't have to. Just find a small model of it. Paint it up. You're good to go. Well, guys, I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. I do plan to release two more of these. And if I see enough support for this type of video, I may even find content for a third. If there's something specific you guys want, let me know down in the comments. Specific tank, specific style, camouflage, anything. Let me know. And I will attempt to do it because I've got a decent amount of resources. I lied. No, I don't. I've got paint. And the ability to 3D print things. But I can't, unless you find a model of it somewhere, I can't CAD stuff. I'm, I'm sorry. But yeah, so like, comment, and subscribe. I also have a Patreon page. It is linked in the YouTube channel. I can no longer link to other websites due to YouTube's stupidity. Uh, I might try live streaming sometime. Probably not because my internet's terrible. Ish. But yeah, I do hope you enjoyed. See you next time, everybody. Maniac out.